Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part two of the Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 update video. So, now we've uh, we talked in the last one about what uh, I've been up to and what Tristan's been up to, so now let's move on to looking at the other two. So, Mike has been expanding the uh, steel smeltery, or rather finishing off the the, um, the the alterations he was making over here. So, we've been upgrading the um, all of the smelteries to, uh, to use to use the electric furnaces, and in these in the case of these these machines over here, to to, uh, to do the um, the intermediate stage as well, where they use acid to wash the uh, wash the ores in order to get the enriched um, copper or enriched iron out again at the other side. That's then in the case of the iron, that's that um, it, it's washed like that, and I'll talk about why it's not working in a moment. <laughs> all then passed down all the way down here into the into a warehouse at the bottom here where it's then uh, passed both down into the trains down here so they can take it away in order for it to be used by the factory and then also passed along here to be taken up here and then loaded in and then passed through here to be made into steel and we we need a lot of steel at the moment as I was talking about in the uh, in the last ep in the last video uh, the space station seems to get through huge quantities of it making the belt and the scaffolding and the pipes and the everything else that's going on up there just seems to get through massive quantities of steel so we're going to need a lot of that uh, and that will then, so it's brought up here. It's then fed down these belts. We've got the uh, the coke being made up here from the uh, from the wood that's coming out of these all of these um, uh, greenhouses. Passed down here, through here, it to being turned into coke, as I said. Passed down and then passed down to here to where we can where we can make it all into steel, which then goes down into a train as normal. So this is this is working nice. This is in theory working nicely. However. If we have a look over here, as I was saying, these have stopped. Um, they've got plenty of water. There's not too much dirty water. The problem is that we've run out of sulfuric acid. So we've got, uh, this might be actually this might be a train full of. But where's it going? It's just going off way off to the north. Who knows? So over here in Big Oil, we are making lots and lots of sulfuric acid. We have all of these machines here making it, and there's a steady flow of sulfur coming out here. But despite all of that. It's not. It's not enough. These um, these tanks aren't filling up quickly enough. It's getting used up in significantly significantly faster than it's being produced because we have all of the um, all of the smelting now up here. Is doing the enriched enrichment stage first, which uses the sulfuric acid. So once the once that starts flowing again, we can get quite lo quite a lot of iron through, quite a lot of copper through here. But unfortunately, at the moment, it's it's stuck. We we until we get until we get a bit more of that flowing. We don't have we don't have any more of those um, of those metals available. So I think one of the things we're going to need to do in the next uh, session is to increase the amount of um, amount of sulfuric acid we're making. The other thing Mike's been doing up here is working on the uh, the stone area, the stone processing. So before we had a problem where we weren't we weren't producing the glass and the uh, silicon fast enough. Well, we are now, as you can see, these are completely backed up. Um, but that was basically down to a lack of sand. So what Mike has done in order to speed that up. Is he's upgraded all of the belts all the way through here to red belts, which means we get a, we can get twice as much flowing in, and because that and because the sand is much more voluminous than the uh, than the stone for the same rate of throughput as you can see here, three stone turns into seven to eight sand, so it's more than twice as much of it, getting almost almost three times as much. He's then split that off onto two separate red belts that go up here. So you've got the first one taking it away from the, the bottom half of the machines then sneaking through underground here and then the second one taking it away from the upper half of the machines so we've then got twice as many belts going into the into this uh, warehouse which means we can then flow twice as much of it out up here to be made into um, uh, hydrochloric acid which is for the for the rare metal processing which is why this one is actually working um, and then more over this way to be made into the into the quartz, which gets made into silicon, and also straight in here to be made into glass to be passed off down this way. Because glass is something else we're going to need a lot of, because a lot of the thing, all of the things that we do in space, um, late, certainly later on, not so much just yet, but later on, will require huge amounts of glass. So it's good that we're getting a decent supply up and running here. It might even be worth putting in another couple of warehouses down here and making this into a big station, just so we can have that extra supply available later. But at the moment, it's designed in such a way that, as you can see, it's quite future-proofed in that it would be relatively easy to dub to put in another two belts coming out of here to another couple of warehouses and have those fill up <clears throat> and balancing between the two is going to be quite hard but eventually we'll get to that but we'll get to the point where we've got enough in all of them and and, and, and everything will be full and we'll have a much larger supply available if, if, if as and when we need it but at the moment that's not not necessary yet because we're using glass at a relatively slow rate 
Uh, he's done a couple of minor fixes in places, so that that problem with the uh, low density structure um, setups I've been I've been talking about it basically every time where we don't have enough where we, where some of these red inserters were missing, he's gone in and fixed that. So that's now all working fine, except once again for the lack of steel. So the steel problem, the steel shortage is still still a major issue here. This might be the first one that I th uh, wherever it is. This one might be the first one that needs to uh, benefit from the from better better machines and with with massive productivity bonuses. We shall see. We might need to look into to beacons before it's worth really doing that though because having the um having putting productivity modules into the machines does tend to slow them down quite a lot um, at the moment we have the tier two productivity modules available and we're making those in some quantities not a huge quantity but some of them at least um, but as you can see that requires um, various quite a lot of circuits it requires a previous generation of modules and it requires a load of sulfur so i think at some point we're probably going to want to set up a, a town somewhere that's just going to make the make um, productivity modules and maybe some of the other modules as well just in huge huge quantities because we're going to I think we're going to need a lot of them in the future and it's one of those things that just expands and expands and expands so that's the thing we'll probably consider but I think potentially boosting the productivity of all of these is going to be very worthwhile as I was saying the problem is though that putting in these modules if you put I think these how many do these take uh, these can take two modules okay so if we, if we put those in yes sure we'll get an extra um, 12% productivity, so an extra 12% steel out for the amount of iron that goes in, but it'll knock 30% off the speed as well, and add 120% onto the energy consumption. So all of these things are, it's a trade-off, um, but at the moment, the way things seem to be going, I think it might be worthwhile to have the uh, take the speed penalty in exchange for actually getting a lot more of this uh, stuff made. Ooh, it looks like we've got a bit of iron flowing through now. Yes, so there we go, the sulfuric acid train has come in, there it is. So it's unloaded its sulfuric acid. Uh, now all of these machines have kicked in. We've got the um, we've got the processing going. We're making the uh, ref the enriched iron. It's coming up here, and it's being turned into the iron plates. So we've got a, a nice steady stream coming through here. It's then getting split in half at this warehouse. Half is going down this way to go to the, uh, the tr to, to load up the stations down here to be taken away to the bus, and the other half's heading off to be made into steel. So the system is basically working. It just had a bit of a, uh, a throughput hiccup, should we say? Uh, Mike also started work on a heat shield town, so I wonder where that's gone. Probably up here. Yes, here we go. This is this was like the sort of the the early stages of, of making heat shields up here, because again, that's another thing that's being used in enormous quantities up in space as we try and build up all of the um, all the space scaffolding and everything else up there. For some reason, everything in in space seems to get hot and requires the shielding. So he's got a little bit of a sort of a proof of concept going on here. I assume this is going to get quite a bit longer. Um, to get the right amount of throughput food for all the machines, it looks like he's he's taken my my uh, design from that I did back down on the bus, where you have a machine making the stone uh, tablets, and then a, the, the, the right number of machines that turn to turn those into heat shields, and then you can just copy and paste this whole thing in above again. Maybe he hasn't done that actually. He looks like he's got a belt of stone coming across the bottom, uh, so maybe maybe actually he's going to go wide rather than long, or maybe he's going to or maybe he's going to then set, set put in another belt across the top here. I don't know. There's 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 many different ways you can set this up, and um, and to be honest, they're all yeah. If this, this this way will work just as well as any other, so I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Fairly sure. Okay, so that's all of um, that's what that's what Mike's been up to at this stage, halfway through the video. Um, I say halfway through the video. We're only ten minutes in. This might be a shorter one than normal. So um, halfway in, I would say if you're uh, if you're enjoying the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. It, 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 like like the video and subscribe to the channel because um, I've, as as I've said before, I've noticed from the stats that come through that uh, only about half the people who watch the videos are subscribed. So if we could get that up a little bit, that'd be very nice. I'm, I'm, having a big boost to subscribers would be fantastic. So Mark has also been doing things. Um, <clears throat> apparently there's a northern oil field where he's been fixing pump jacks. I think it was just one of them that was a bit dodgy and pointing in the wrong direction or something like that. Oh yes, he's put um, explosives onto big oil as well. So that's possibly part of the reason we're having, we're struggling with the uh, with the sulphur supply up here. The acid, we're not using all of the sulphur for acid anymore. Some of it is now passing down here to be turned into um, explosives. So we've got that passing through here. And as you can see, we're producing the explosives, dumping them out onto the belt. Those are going up, as usual, to another station where we've loaded up a train. And those are being taken off to the bus. And that's for making things like um, artillery cannon, uh, artillery shells and uh, delivery cannon capsules and so on. All those sort of things that, that require a steady supply of explosives to keep them keep them working. And because that's another thing that's made from sulfur and basically made from oil products, we're making it here in, in the general oil processing area. He says spiked walls, so does that mean he's made another type of wall that is spiky or that he's been putting spikes on the walls? I think it means he's made another type of wall, so let's see if we can find out where... Here we go. 
Right, so we've got, um, we're making stone walls here, which are being put into a chest, and that's what we've been using so far. Then up here we are making, presumably these are concrete walls? Uh, yes, concrete walls. And then up here, we're combining that with uh, with some steel plate in order to make spiked concrete, spiked steel, steel walls, apparently. I mean, spiked concrete walls seems like a better description, to be honest, but maybe there's a, maybe there's a coating of steel over them or something, which makes them a bit tougher. Um... So they deal damage back to the attacker. Nice, that's quite vicious. So we've got, let's have a look at the stats for these things. So we've got the basic the basic stone walls, which I was hoping to get some health stats on these as well, but no, it's not going to tell me anything useful about them. We don't seem to have any of those walls out there, so you know what, let's get the bots to place a little bit so we can have a look at them. So put a low row of concrete wall across there. A row of, let's have a row of stone wall as well for direct comparison. And then we can have some of that nice vicious spiked wall across just to the north of it. There we go. Oh, okay, we're not actually using the concrete wall. The concrete walls aren't being put into a red chest anywhere, so we can't actually build any of it. So, we've got the um, the basic concrete, basic stone walls have 350 health. The uh, concrete walls would have 800 health if we actually had any of them to place. And then we've got the spiked walls, which have 1,000 health, so they're actually three times as tough as the uh, as the stone walls. So that'll be quite nice. It'll take a bit longer to get through. So they've got the spikes on there, which means that the biters, when the biters attack them, they'll be to pick up damage from just simply attacking the walls, as well as from all of the guns or lasers that are behind them as well. So that should make them um, quite a lot more effective, I think. It, and But also the fact that they will last, they have three times as much health is also a great bonus. It means they'll, they'll last much better when they get attacked. Excellent. So I guess that means that over time we're going to start gradually upgrading all of the walls around here to the spiky steel walls. Um, as, as as and when they as and when they become available, and then presumably filter, and then the idea will be that we then filter the the old walls back into the uh, back into boxes here, where we can then turn them into um, in, into the uh, then pass them through the upgrade process to turn them into the better ones. So these presumably are, fi are filtered down to be to be accepting yes, just the just the uh, just the stone walls. So this means that as we bring these walls back here and dump them onto the um, onto the logistics network, they'll automatically be passed into here, and they'll be quickly turned into the up upgraded types of walls rather than building new ones for this. So that should work quite well. Mark has also made uranium ammo. So I, I, I noticed this in the last um, in the last episode when uh, when I was looking at what Tristan had been doing with the with the trains. But up here we've now, as, as, as I said, we've got the um, the uranium ammo coming in here for the um, for the for the rifles. He says he's also, oh yes, down here, um, he's also got the um, it being made for the sniper rifle, or the anti-materiel rifle as well. So that's going to do huge amounts more damage. Again, let's see if we can, let's see if we can look at the numbers for these. So we've gone from the, we've gone from um, 80 plus 40, so 100 to 200 with the red, and then 200 plus an additional 120 with the uh, with the uranium ammunition. So that's a total of 320 damage from each shot, which is... Um, not quite twice that one, which is not quite twice that one, but it means we've we've now got about almost yeah almost three times as much damage from the from from the ammunition as, as we did before. So that's going to be much more useful when trying to clear out the biters. It's not going to be something I'm going to personally find particularly useful, but I'm sure Mike will when he's running out there and, uh, and shooting trying to shoot the biters with the uh, with with with, um, with whatever gun he's using at the time, and it'll mean taking out the worms a bit quicker as well. Although hopefully we'll be uh, moving over to the, to have to using um, late. We'll be using artillery and lasers a bit more in the future, so we'll, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I do know that the uh, the damage output of, of bullet weapons is far, far higher than lasers, but you do have to make the ammunition for them, so it's a bit more expensive from that point of view. Mark has also boosted red belt production, apparently, so that's over here. Um... Oh, I see. I see what he's done. Yes. Yeah, so, so we've got the um, underground belts going through here, carrying all of the um, the bits and pieces that need for the belts through, and he speed moduled them as well, so we can make red belts much, much more quickly. And that's probably going to be valuable because I think we're going to need to start upgrading chunks of the bus to be uh, to be to be um, red, just to get that extra level of throughput through, because quite a lot of these things just aren't aren't coming through quickly enough, especially when something really greedy like um, loading the rocket kicks in uh, up here. I mean, the, the amount of steel that goes into this is is. A, Quite astonishing. We've got, um, yeah, we've got another one, two, three, four, another five. Yeah, we've got another five thousand in here, which probably means we've run out in space once again. So it's um, hopefully this will fill up fairly soon, on, and uh, we'll be able to launch the rocket again because it looks like, the, as usual, we're getting through stuff up in space much, much faster than it's being brought in. So that's going to need to be, um, yeah, we're going to need to sort that out and get and get a better supply coming in over here. And that brings us on to the the uh, Mark's rather enormous project. <laughs> so let's have a look at it. So it all starts. Um, right. So it all it all sort of starts down 
uh, down here where we're making where we're making the um, the pollution filters and these are things that are taken off and put into the um, into the filtering machines and these these are the filters that actually absorb the pollution and then pass something and then uh, and, and get dirtied and then are passed out to be cleaned afterwards so these are currently going up a belt over here all the way across here I think this is something I put in um, all the way over to here where they loaded where they were originally well actually they still are being loaded into into trains that take them off to the outposts but uh, Mark has decided that that isn't a good enough way to do it he's not happy with that system so instead we've got this this we've got this additional split off here where we'll bring bring the filters out here we're trying to top them up from this blue warehouse but that's not going particularly well because the belt's full um, and I was gonna say it always will be but that's not quite true if we get a lot of flow going through here then this will only fill in every other square because this is a yellow going onto a red but this is why my uh, mark needed quite so many red belts because we can follow this up to here okay so it's coming onto here where we're um, joining in with all of the filters that are being brought out from the cleaning system which is great um, that then goes down this belt all up oh, down here which comes up here through the middle of the um, core mining processing right and it goes onto this belt up here where we've got a solid belt of filters that goes out here and now we're starting to actually see the air purifiers so the machines are working in here to keep the um, keep the pollution out and it goes along here around the around the edge of this area around this uh, sulfuric acid drop-off station and the belt goes up here through here uh, through here, round, round along the edge of this lake, um, up to up to up to this t wall right at the top here. That's nice. Uh, goes across, and he's come through, and he's, he's basically he's taken the filters off the off these belts up here, which used to carry them, and removed the ones that would then feed them back in again, um, which is fine again. So yep, yeah, all the way across here. In fact, I'm going to zoom out because this belt then goes from here down, all the way round here, round down, across here, again down along another wall down here. We're down here. This is getting ridiculous. It's getting a bit silly. So it comes down here. What's going? It's flowing, flowing down to here. Okay, it does actually join onto that. It looks like there was a gap there from the map view, but there, but it turns out there isn't. So it carries on all the way, all the way around here. Basically, this belt, as you probably guessed by now, goes literally all the way around. Well, I'm not going to say around the entire base because there's a few bits of the really, really distant parts over here that it doesn't actually get to. But it goes around all of the entirety of everything that could be considered remotely core of the base. And finally, comes back around here and essentially joins joins the queue here. So there's a bit of a trickle of them coming through belts of the filters coming through. And if there are any and there are a few and the dirty filters also get dumped onto this belt as well. So here's a, a handful of them coming along here. Um, and those will then get filtered out, if you'll pardon the expression, pardon the uh, accidental pun, they'll get filtered out by this splitter, which sends them back down here, again through the middle of the uh, core processing, back down over here, to where they'll be passed up through the, through the system here, where we've got loads of machines that will clean out the filters, and pass them back in, back round to be put through the system again. We've also got some dirty water processing here to get rid of the um, the dirty water that's came, gained from cleaning the filters, and that turns it into a bit of iron ore and a bit of stone, and then a load more clean ore that just gets passed around again. So we have an absolutely enormous belt of filters going essentially round the entire factory, um, and this means now that we have essentially got all of the pollution just being kept inside well inside that wall of filters there's a little bit out there that's that was probably already escaped before he put the filters in because you can see that anything that gets out creeps its, finds its way out of here is immediately sucked up and down here anything that finds its way down that far is immediately sucked up so this bit will either drift slowly back in this way and get dealt with or it'll drift away and sort of dissipate so i'm not too worried about that this patch up here probably much the same um it's struggling a little bit to keep up along here and that's probably because there's a mine here and mines are very very dirty so i think we might need a couple more of the um, a couple more of the air purifiers along in this area just to make sure it doesn't sneak out any further but basically this is doing a very very good job of, of keeping all of the pollution inside the base and prevent preventing any of it from escaping so this is why this is why we've managed to expand this far out and and um, and still got these very very small biter nests outside our area outside the factory because we are working very very hard on keeping all of the air clean and therefore not exciting the biters too much which means they tend not to come back in and start biting out chunks of the base so that's great it's it's working well it's perhaps a little excessive but um I mean, it, it's it's effective though so i'm not going i'm not going to knock it <laughs> um well done there yes it's a it was a 
patch of oh okay there's a core mining drill here and apparently one two three four is it actually probably is enough because it's not leaking out anywhere outside this uh, this chunk but it's um it's just not able to quite clean it all up because it's kicking it out so fast that as soon as it kicks some out even if, if as soon as he's clean it all up it the uh, the mining drill kicks out a little bit more but it's keeping it inside that chunk so that's okay so yeah that's um that's covering the area quite well i think we're uh, we keep generally managing to keep the uh, the air outside the base clean and so so the natives are quite happy um at least they will be until we until we start making the artillery as i was talking about earlier <laughs> right so while we're um now is it, if we get, get coming coming to a close let's have a quick look at the uh, the death counter so um mike has done quite well this stream he uh, only died once so well done there that does bring him up to a total of 28 but to be fair he has been doing most of the combat in this in this run and uh, most of those deaths have been out here somewhere yeah, Mike died to a train this time, so he got hit by a hit by a locomotive. Well done there. Um, Mark and is still on seven. I'm still on one. And as as we stated, as we mentioned in the last video, Tristan has managed to now pick up his first death. So yeah, again, well done there. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Couldn't leave you out there on your own. And as you and we've had the, the the usual suspects on the on the kills over there. It's mostly been to worms, but we have had added in a a locomotive death in there. So uh, thank, thanks to uh, thanks to Mike. Well done there. <laughs> So next time, what are we going to be doing? Well, let's have a look at what people have said they want to do first, and then go from there. Mike wants to finish off the heat shield town he's been working on over here, where he's building up the heat shields, as, as I as I touched on. So that's going to be a, a fairly fairly important thing to do. Um, the steel processing and is and the lack um, is going to need a, a, a thorough looking at and working out whether the problem is related to the the, re the way it's processing it over here <clears throat> and, and these machines or whether it's whether it's more of the more whether it was just because we ran out of sulfuric acid. So that's going to need a, quite a bit of thinking about and working out where the problem is there and, and how that needs to be fixed. So I think more sulfuric acid is definitely going to be a thing we need, but also having a bit of a think about the steel production because it it's never I feel like it's never been quite sufficient and this this dribble of iron going into it we're as you can see here we're only using the top couple of machines even if these belts were full how full are the yeah even if these belts were full we would maybe only be using the top six of them so i think this is the perfect um place to put in lots and lots of productivity modules and maybe some higher some some better um um better furnaces although i know mike has just rebuilt this area and therefore he might be a little bit reluctant to go in and do too much changing of it Mark says he hasn't quite finished the belt, which is the massive one going all the way around the world. Um, so he wants to work on that. He also needs to get artillery up and running, so that's, that's high on his list. And he wants to make a blueprint for making delivery cannon capsules from core fragments. That sounds that sounds very worthwhile. Um, he wants to then carry on more artillery stuff, um, and then maybe some more logistics thoughts. Tristan wants to claim this um, core mark, core for a core. Oops capsule this uh, core core seam up here stick a miner on that so we can get a little bit more into the uh, into the core throughput uh, he's got needs to do some more playing with the ghost train and uh, wants to finish off the last two nests down here that um, finally that were finally sort of defeating him is slightly too strong a word but uh, uh, they're just are all that's left of the um, the biters in this area and then hopefully by then we'll have artillery and we'll be able to use that to come in and just clear out all the worms from a, from, from a safe distance although to be honest with the uranium ammo that might be a lot easier it might it might take a lot less time than we expect it to even even if, if we're doing it by hand and finally myself well I've got this area up here in space which is coming along quite nicely but I need to expand it I need to keep going eastbound with this and I want to make the uh, particularly the uh, production science pack because I'm sure there was some stuff in here that uh, I really wanted that's gated behind production science and then we're going to need to start thinking about all of the exotic materials and maybe sending someone off to another planet to get some vulcanite and perhaps some cryonite as well so there's lots more to be done um, we just need to decide what what, what sort of pro what we want to prioritize what we want to do in what order and what's the best way to get it all up and running so there's a lot to think about there cryonite lubricant that's an interesting one um that might be a good way to make the lubricant up in space we shall we shall see how that goes so there's a lot to do but at the moment we've hit a sort of we've hit a sort of plateau so we've got a lot of the stuff made that we were working towards so now we now, now we need to have a bit of a think about what we want to work towards next so if you've got any suggestions on what you think should be our uh, our next our next focus let me know in the comments and we'll and maybe we'll uh, start working towards that so, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the uh, stream sponsor. That's trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays. Use the code lawrenceplays on checkout to get uh, one free month on your, with your first order. Um, and that'll be on whatever um, service for hosting, whatever games you're looking for. So, Factorio, um, Minecraft, and a handful of others as well that, um, that I'm a bit less familiar with. 
And uh, don't forget to come back for all of the um, other stuff that goes on on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed so you see all the videos. We've got um, there was another update video came out yesterday. There'll be one tomorrow for the Dyson Sphere program streams. And uh, there's various other videos coming out here and here and there as as, as things go on. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. And I'll yep I'll see you then. Bye bye.